Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining a finding that should make anyone with ringing ears pay attention. New data show untreated hearing loss can raise your risk of heart failure by nearly a third. Let's find out why. I'm Alara Sky. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll unpack that research, trace the biological links between your cochlea and your cardiovascular system, and outline practical steps, dietary, psychological, and lifestyle-based, that can protect both your hearing and your heart. The headline figure is striking. Researchers followed more than 164,000 adults for almost 12 years. After adjusting for age, weight, smoking, alcohol, activity, and even genetic risk scores, people with poor hearing still faced a 28% higher chance of developing heart failure. Those with insufficient hearing, not yet severe, ran a 15% higher risk, and wearing hearing aids trimmed that only slightly to 26%. That tells us the devices solve audibility, but don't fix the systemic injury driving the damage, which appears to be vascular stress and chronic inflammation. Let's dive into the mechanics. Why would a problem in the ear predict a problem in the heart? Most listeners think of their ears as passive receivers, not energy-hungry organs connected to blood flow. The cochlea is actually one of the most metabolically demanding structures in your body. It's packed with capillaries that must deliver constant oxygen and nutrients to hair cells that convert sound waves into electrical signals. Even subtle circulatory compromise shows up there first, as measurable hearing loss. So, reduced hearing acts like an early warning gauge. But the study also highlights a psychological dimension. Emotional strain linked to struggling in conversations accounted for almost 17% of the heart failure risk. How does that translate biologically? Continual effort to decipher speech lights up the sympathetic nervous system. Heart rate, blood pressure, and cortisol all rise. Over months, that persistent activation fuels oxidative stress degrades the endothelial lining of vessels, and remodels cardiac muscle, laying the groundwork for heart failure. Social isolation compounds it. Someone avoiding gatherings because they can't follow chatter loses the stress-buffering effects of companionship. That isolation and a tendency toward emotional volatility added another 6% risk in the data. Exactly. It's a feedback loop. Hearing loss provokes stress. Stress accelerates vascular injury. That injury worsens both hearing and cardiac function. Until the vascular piece is addressed, amplifying sound through aids only quiets the symptom, not the source. The researchers found the association strongest in people who had no prior stroke or coronary disease. Basically, folks who still looked low risk on standard assessments. That's significant for screening. It means audiology tests should join blood pressure and lipid panels during cardiovascular checkups. A deteriorating word and noise score might prompt earlier lifestyle interventions before overt heart damage appears. Hearing loss also flags broader neurodegenerative risk. Mild impairment boosts the odds of Parkinson's and dementia. That suggests shared roots in mitochondrial dysfunction and systemic inflammation, again pointing to lifestyle leverage points. And that brings us to prevention. First, diet. Eliminating industrial seed oils. Corn, soybean, safflower, canola, cuts linoleic acid overload, easing mitochondrial stress. Replacing them with grass-fed butter, tallow, and collagen-rich proteins support cell membranes and energy production crucial for both cochlear and cardiac cells. Listeners often ask, do I have to go ketogenic? The short answer is no. You can include whole food carbohydrates, especially ripe fruit which supplies glucose without the oxidative byproducts that refined grains bring. The common thread is minimal processing and a strict cap on seed oils. Next is stress modulation. Schedule deliberate downregulation each day. 60 minutes of steady walking outdoors, 10 minutes of slow nasal breathing, or gentle morning stretches in sunlight. These activities shift the nervous system out of fight or flight, lowering inflammatory markers and blood pressure. For psychological resilience, Tactics like journaling or brief cold water exposure train the brain to handle discomfort without a spike in adrenaline. Morning sunlight synchronizes circadian rhythms, improving sleep depth, another anti-inflammatory lever. 
Red light therapy can add a mitochondrial boost. Near-infrared wavelengths penetrate tissue, stimulating cytochrome C oxidase and enhancing ATP output, helpful for the energy-starved hair cells of the inner ear and the myocardium alike. Magnesium deserves its own mention. Modern diets leave many people deficient, and low magnesium heightens excitability of both the nervous and cardiovascular systems. Which forms do you favor, and at what doses? Magnesium glycinate for evening relaxation and magnesium malate earlier in the day for ATP synthesis. Typical supplemental range is 300 to 400 milligrams elemental magnesium split into two doses, adjusted for bowel tolerance. Always coordinate with existing medications that affect heart rhythm. What about exercise intensity? High load sessions can transiently spike oxidative stress. Should someone with hearing loss shift strategy? Prioritize circulation over maximum effort. Daily moderate walking, slow stair climbs, rebounder sessions, or elastic band resistance coax endothelial cells to grow new capillaries and improve nitric oxide signaling without provoking cortisol surges. Putting it together. If your hearing has dipped, treat it as a systemic message. Get a cardiovascular evaluation, retire seed oils, embrace whole foods, move gently but consistently, incorporate magnesium, and carve space for daily decompression. Those steps tackle the root drivers, vascular stiffness, oxidative stress, mitochondrial drag, and neuroendocrine overload. They won't just steady your audiogram. They tilt the odds away from future heart failure, dementia, and metabolic disease. Before we wrap, one practical test. Ask someone to read a sentence in a bustling cafe. If you need frequent repeats, schedule a hearing assessment and share the results with your cardiology team. Early data equals early action. And remember, improving auditory health is inseparable from improving cellular health throughout the body. Your ears can't thrive on compromised circulation any more than your heart can. Address both together for the best chance at long-term vitality. That's all for today's exploration of hearing loss and heart failure on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Thanks for listening and taking your health seriously. I'm Alara Skye. Keep questioning, keep learning, and we'll see you next time on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.